Today on Locked On Red Wings, Jake Wallman scores a buzzer beater to carry Detroit over Carolina. And then Marco Casper recalled from Sweden officially to the Detroit Red Wings. You're Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ news radio podcast. Well, Scotty's the host over at Locked On Tigers, as well as a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. Scotty, happy opening day. I'm sorry that they got shut out, but happy opening day. Happy opening day, brother. Yeah, no, it was a, uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> it's definitely one where the the fan base is is not not very pleased, rightfully so, after all the times they got shut out last year. But um, that's one of the best pitchers in baseball over there. So we'll we'll see what the rest of the weekend holds. But definitely a slow start. Well, at least the team across the street. Well, I mean the team that is home across the street as right. you know, Detroit, the Tigers are down in Tampa. Uh, they, they scored goals. I was about to say they showed up. They scored goals in this one and they ended up winning it. And we're going to talk about the entire game, obviously, but there's so much to get to. Obviously the biggest news, which is crazy to think that there's bigger news over a Jake Wallman buzzer beater with three seconds left, <laughs> but the 2022 eighth overall pick for the Detroit Red Wings has officially been recalled. From the Swedish Hockey League, that's, of course, Marco Casper. Recalled not to Grand Rapids, but to Detroit. To the Red Wings. Marco Casper is a Detroit Red Wing. And so, Scotty, obviously you and I have got to get to that, but I feel like it is most pertinent to start with the game itself and break that down. And then we also have a freaking game preview because the Red Wings are going to Winnipeg. Literally tonight, by the time people are listening to this, to play at like nine at night. I don't know what even Lalone said it. Like, I don't know what the NHL is thinking, but we can get to that later. Starting off with this game, I feel like it would be remiss of us not to talk, like not to just jump right to the end of the game and talk about the fact that Jake Wallman is a hype machine. That man is incredible. I said it after he scored that goal. I have decided Jake Wallman is the next Red Wings jersey I'm going to get to continue the trend of, mostly defensemen that I, right. can, I tend to get jerseys for, but I, I think I love him. I think I love him too. He's uh he's incredible and he is an absolute electric factory. Um, really, really wanted him to gritty on him, to be honest with you. Uh, but no, man, it was, it was a beautiful shot, obviously. Uh, and he's uh he's an emotional player and, and I love the interaction with the crowd and like the, let the kids play movement is so awesome. And so, yeah, very, very pumped and an absolutely electric way to end the hockey game. I do want to point out um, that play does not happen without a phenomenal setup by Andrew Kopp. Let's just all make that abundantly clear. He checked into the game, uh, literally with five seconds left, came off the bench, made like a V-line for the puck in the corner, turned around, found Wallman, as the at the blue line and Wallman just one time uh, sniped it, but there was like ten seconds left in the game when when Andrew Cobb checked into the hockey game and he very very easily could have just like taken that off or like not skated very hard or play, played more defensive or not very aggressively and just played for overtime and he like a rocket just immediately off the bench went straight to the corner pass back that play literally does not happen without Andrew Cobb. Well, and you know who got the secondary assist on that, right, buddy? If you want to I pump your own don't. tires a little bit more, Adam Ernie. Nice. Adam Ernie initiated that play. Um, but I, so the Andrew Cobb thing is interesting. You obviously have been touting him this entire second half as his plays continue to improve. And somebody posted on Twitter today in response to Jacob Vrana having scored his seventh and eighth goal with St. Louis, a game winner. The other night over Vancouver in overtime, great for him. I'm super happy. But then posted Andrew Kopp's goal total and point total as like a rebuttal to that because Andrew Kopp only has eight goals. But Andrew Kopp also has over 30-plus assists. 
and is over the 40 plus point mark. And I know his goal total is taking a huge step back from his career year last year, but his assist total is at least 10 more than where it sat last season. His, he is become, he, the second half of the season, he has literally become the player you signed him to be, which is a defensively responsible playmaking second line center. He's doing that. He's the, the, he is feeding his teammates. He's getting his, he's gotten assists and it feels like almost every game recently. I've liked what I've seen out of Andrew Kopp in recent games. I really have. And I'm with you, but obviously that's your guy. I have my own guy, but that's your guy. What does, what is the correlation between Andrew Kopp and Jacob Verana? Am I missing there, something? No, there is There's none. zero and correlation between those two players. Some people, you know, just look at point totals and think that's all that matters. Okay. No, no, no. I, I get that. But why are we even comparing that? Like they're, because okay. you traded Verana, but you didn't trade Cop. I don't. I don't. The, the point was to, to disparage Andrew Cop, and Andrew cop has been fine. Okay, that makes Andrew zero Kopp's sense. Andrew has been available. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, yeah, no, I, and like very admittedly, and we covered it and talked about it a ton. Like the first up until American Thanksgiving, like it was, it, he struggled. Like that. That was a, he got off to a really really slow start. Was not the player you signed him to be, but. He's been better in the faceoff circle lately. He's been way better defensively, which is one of the reasons you brought him in. And uh, the the point total, whether it's assists or goals, has also gone up a lot over the last few months. So, yeah, I, I think I'm really excited for, like, hopefully not an injury like in the preseason type of offseason for Cop, where we can just get a full healthy season out of him next year and kind of see uh, what type of production he can do over over 82 healthy. But back to uh, Andrew or Jake Wallman and Moritz Sider, they far and away were the outside of Alex and Dalkovich were the best players on the ice in this For hockey sure. game. And, you know, in a game where exactly at, at even strength, exactly what we previewed occurred, right? The Red Wings were dominated at Corsi four. They are dominated ex expected goals for percentage, but Carolina only managed and total shots too. They were dominating total shots, but Carolina only managed to score two goals because despite the fact that they were the best team in the league at those metrics, they're 18th in the league in total goal, goal scored at even strength. So they struggle to finish despite how damn good they are at possessing the puck. And Jake Wallman and Moritz Sider were the only two Red Wings as consequence of their good possession numbers, Carolina's. Jake Wallman and Moritz Sider were the only two players on the team with an above 50% Corsi and an above 50% expected goals for percentage. And they were well above and expected goals for percentage. Moritz Sider led the team with 60%, and Jake Wallman was second on the team on 50, well, it's basically 60% as well, 59.98. And if you go to hockey stat cards, as I'll pull that up for you guys as well real quick, it's not it's not a very attractive hockey stat card today, guys, and well, they got for good played. reason. <laughs> yeah, at even strength, exactly, again, exactly what we said was going to happen, happened. The Carolina Hurricanes suppressed shots, they took a lot of shots, and they possessed the puck, but they just couldn't find the back of the net. So a lot of this hockey stack card doesn't look super favorable on the Red Wings, but the two guys who are at the top, Jake Wallman and Moritz Sider, Boom. those two guys outside of, again, your goaltender were the best players on the ice without a doubt. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I a hundred percent agree. So, um, I real quick, we'll, we'll talk about Nadelkovich second, second segment. Cause we got to give him his, as you like to say, give him his flowers. Um, but I do want to give a quick shout out to David Perron as well. He had two assists in this game on the Kubalik and he had a beautiful pass on the Kubalik goal. And he had an assist on the Dylan Larkin goal as well. The secondary, I believe it was that now gives him eight points in the last six games is he, like he was cold for a long time there, but recently switch has been flipped and he, he is back on it. He's, he's been real good again lately. And I, I love, I mean, I just love when anyone succeeds on the hockey team, right? <laughs> I mean, that's some good news. Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, so let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue the conversation. We can talk about Alex Nedeljkovic and other guys who we think stood out, and talk about where the team failed. Uh, we already mentioned one possession numbers. We expected that, but there are other areas as well. Uh, but first, I got to talk to you guys today about FanDuel Sportsbook. The tournament is heating up, and there's no better place to get in on get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. That's because right now, FanDuel is giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash lockdown and sign up today to claim your no-sweat first bet. Then you can wager on everything from the money line to point spreads to which team will be cutting down the net. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't miss your no-shot, don't miss your shot at a no-sweat first bet. 
up to $1,000. When you join FanDuel today, just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Segment two, Locked on Red Wings podcast. Scotty and I are talking about the three to two buzzer beater win over the Carolina Hurricanes. No shot betting is what Brian does every night. <laughs> no shot betting. Uh, I actually went two for two last night or the day before, but tonight sure, I, I only put, no, I bet the wild money line and I bet the, uh, oh, good Lord. I'm drawing a this, blank. No, this is real for sure. Yeah. Flyers. It was uh nope, that was tonight. No, I bet the Flyers money went tonight and that didn't win. <laughs> you should they, have did you see how they lost? Yes, I did. Ottawa? Ridiculous. Insane. No, I gotta look this up now. Uh I bet I bet Wild two nights ago and they beat Colorado in Colorado. And it was Panthers. Panthers over Toronto. I bet that uh, one. And there that you one. go. That's what it was. Uh it. anyways, this we, this is a packed show, so we gotta keep things moving. Yep. Uh Scotty, Alex and Delkovich, pretty damn good tonight, huh? Pretty darn good. Uh, there's something about net against the can the can <coughs> the canes. Goodness, dude, my <laughs> body would not let me say the word canes. There, um, there's something about net against the canes, man. There's something about it. It's uh, something in the water whenever he plays against Carolina. And I don't know if it's, I, I, I'm assuming some of it is like a revenge tour type of thing that he wants to play well against his former team. But uh, it, <laughs> not going to complain, man. Pretty looked pretty darn good in this one. Yeah, he stood on his head. He had a save percentage in this game of a 929, a goal save above expected of 1.34. So he saved more goals statistically than advanced analytics say that he should uh frederick anderson just for what it's worth at a negative 1.28 expected goals for us he allowed three goals on 22 total shots but i mean i mean when you watch nadelkovich play in a game like this the way he did this is the that was the nadelkovich that last season we believed might be the solution at times i mean we had a whole episode where it's like putting nadelkovich back in the calder conversations and get conversation right. again because yesterday yesterday last year he was still an eligible eligible rookie um but then he fell apart in the second half of the season as the entire team did and this season it wasn't any better but today was without a doubt his best performance of the season and it was just it was a feel-good win for alex and Elkovich, and it felt good for the rest of us watching him and you talk about the two goals he did allow i don't really put any onus on him in in regards to both those goals two shots from the point through a million screens just beat him it's it's hard to it's hard to track a puck when you have four bodies in front. So yeah, I think the one was def- one of them was. Yeah, too. I was gonna say one of them was redirected. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, good for Alex and Alkovich. Great game. Uh, Absolutely a great game. And yeah, I mean, we, we talk about it a lot, but every person not named Huso that's gonna be in the net for the rest of the year for the Red Wings is playing for for uh, a, a contract this uh this summer. So uh, definitely important games, even if it's not of the utmost important for the Red Wings season per se. It's certainly still very important for uh, for these fine gentlemen. Absolutely, uh, Scotty. What else we got from this hockey game that we liked? Um, I already talked about Andrew Cup. I mean, like <laughs> that's, Kubelik, I mean, that's twenty, right? That's twenty for him, and I think that was like our upper limit on what we wanted. We we said like we did somewhere a ceilings between... and floor thing, and we were like, if he breaks twenty, that's a major success. And like, yeah, the the rate has slowed down a lot, absolutely, in the second half of the season. But it doesn't matter, like in the terms of value, just like pure value and what you're paying him and and what you brought him in for. Uh, it's like without a doubt, I don't care about the rate. Twenty goals is is more than what you signed up for, and that's a successful signing. I mean, it's the second best season he's had on the stat sheet since his rookie Calder final. Where is he in goals on the team? Um, let me 20 know. has to be towards the top. He's got to be second on the team, I would imagine, at this point, if not third behind David Perron. Give me one quick second. I'll look that up. Yeah, as, sorry. I kind of put you on the talking. spot there. But, no, you're um, good. That's why I'm on ESPN. Uh, it's David, just like it, it's one of those things where the he's second. Yeah, he's second. Yeah. So, so what? Like, 
Oh, his rate slowed down. Okay, well, he's second. He might finish the season with the second most goals on the team. That is well worth the contract you're giving him. I don't care that he slowed down in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. And he's got 43 points as well, which is also second most from his rookie season. It's only three points behind his career high of 46 from his rookie year. So he's had a better season this year with the Red Wings than he did the previous two with the Blackhawks. I mean, two years, I think 2.5 million or something like that. Maybe even That's less than that. over half a point it's, a game. He's going to finish yeah. just over half a point a game. Uh, he's been worth it. He has been worth every penny. So seeing, seeing him succeed is great. And that feed from David Perron for the, Beauty. it wasn't a breakaway per se. As he's streaking down the wing, but the defender had yeah. the angle on him. It was a great shot. I, can we also point out how, the Red Wings goal scoring was so evenly spaced in this game. They scored 58 seconds into the game. Didn't score again until the midway point of the second and then scored with three seconds left in the game. <laughs> like they were rationing that crap out. Like they were like, no, God, don't, don't, don't go through too fast guys. <laughs> that's a, uh, that's, that's a uh, grass thought. <laughs> they, <laughs> they saw what they did against Pittsburgh. They're like, we can't score three in the first because then we'll just cough it up. We got to, we got to ration it out across the game. That's how we keep ourselves alive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We got to score right at the beginning, right in the middle, and right at the end. Yeah. That's that kept me on my toes. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> so ridiculous. Uh, Dylan Larkin also got a power play goal ass assisted by Alex Chason. And yep. of course, again, as mentioned, David Perron. And uh, that was his 70, 28th goal of the season and 72nd point on the year. He is now one point away from his uh, career, tying his career high and two points away from snapping it. And that is his, I said 72nd, so 72nd in 74 games. I think he's two games behind point a game after that three point night the other night. Yeah. It was a great feed from Chase on an even better. Finish Dylan Larkin's shot. He he is he actually he beat him at the same spot. He beat him high glove side, just like Kubelik did. So maybe uh maybe that's a weak spot for uh Anderson. Yeah, honestly, that's a good call, maybe. But I'm also talking off the top of my head. But I mean, <laughs> as far as guys who I thought played good, I think that about wraps it up. Obviously, the goals are independent moments. But Nadelkovich, Wallman, Sider were the guys who played consistently good. You had your goal scorers, and those were great moments. But overall, again, Scotty, the Carolina Hurricanes controlled the pace of this game throughout the entirety of the game. And Completely. I, I do think, and I, I hope it's not too blasphemous for me to say this, but I don't think this was Edvinson's best game. In fact, I would argue it was probably his worst game since getting called up. He ended up in the box twice. And that's something I've noticed out of Edvinson is he does take a lot of penalties as well. And that might be because, you know, a lot of guys take penalties when they're they're caught out of position or they're beat, you know, in an attempt to try and recl reclaim that ground, get that ground back that they just lost. And so I have to imagine that his penalty rate will go down you know, once he's fully adjusted, he's had a couple of really, really good games, but he takes as many penalties as he draws from the other team. He took two in this game, which is why we pulled up hockey stat cards. I didn't mention it, but he was dead last on the team mm -hmm. in impact in this game. And that a lot of it has to do with the fact that he took two penalties, one of which I believe the hurricane scored on. If not, it was right after it expired. Yeah, for sure. And and that's, you know, that that's why you're playing him in the NHL level for the like t nine games at the end of the season. Like that's that's why, right? You want him to uh to get his feet wet and kind of get used to the the pace and make those adjustments. Like that's that's why he's playing at the end of the season in games that don't matter for the team. Like that's that's why. So, um yeah, not a great game, but he's also had some really good games and this is a juggernaut of a team and he was paired with uh Ben Sherratt for whatever that's worth to you. You can speak amongst yourselves in that one. And like th there's, yeah, like th that's, it's, it's an adjustment period for sure. That's what the remainder of the season is for him. And if you want to be fair in Edvinson's defense, he played the third most amount of minutes on the team at even yeah. strength. That's a lot of, he was out there a ton. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of, and they're clearly doing this because they want to see what he got. They booted him up to the second pair with Ben Sherrod as they both returned, and they wanted to see what he could do. And this is a tough team to play against, and they gave him a lot of minutes. And For he sure. didn't have a great game, but again, I'm not worried. I'm just pointing it out. No, yeah, I'm not, yeah, yeah. Absolutely no, I, not I, I get you. It's, it objectively happened for sure, but I'm, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's an adjustment period for him. Um, 
And oh, Chase on. Yeah, Chase on the dog. Um, Eight minutes of ice time at even strength gets an assist. <laughs> he he don't miss. He doesn't, man. That, that is the dog. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it. Like the wings got got honestly heavily outplayed for about forty minutes, but came across out of there with a win. So like whatever, I'm happy about it. I'm down. So we'll take another quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk about the other big news they Marco. reported on afterwards. Marco. And then we'll finish off with a very brief game preview as we don't have a lot of time to talk about it, but we'll do it nonetheless. Actually, crap, Scotty, they have two games this weekend because they play on Sunday in Toronto. Dope. This is going to be a really light preview, guys. Basically, we're going to tell you who they play and send it off to the weekend. Uh, Anyways, we'll be back. Lockdown Red Wings. Segment three, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Scotty and I are going to transition now into talking about the big news. After the game, the Red Wings made it official. They made a, po- made a post on Twitter announcing that 2022 eighth overall pick Marco Casper has been recalled from the Swedish Hockey League, and he did not get assigned to Grand Rapids, at least not immediately. But I had a feeling if they were to do that, they would have done it immediately. He is recalled to the Detroit Red Wings. Marco Casper, Scotty after that hell of a win, is now a Detroit Red Wing. And that is just the cherry on top of a, a an amazing cake that was this entire night. Yeah, and- I'm, uh, it, it's exciting. And, like, that's, that's – A, I think that's the sign of a team that is trying to take a step forward next year because they are – giving like you're throwing Edvinson and Casper out there to end the season this year. Like that means that in some reality, there's some chance at a legitimate look for them to start off the season next year, obviously very much Edvinson, but Casper clearly a little bit as well. Um, And yeah, it's awesome. Uh, It's, it's brings a lot more excitement to a lot of meaningless games as far as the wings go to end the season, which is obviously great. Um, But getting a chance to see him, Pretty, I mean, I think he can just play out the season, right? Don't we only have like eight or nine games left? I'm pretty sure he can just play out. That was their 74th game today. So that would, so yeah, get... you have, okay, yeah. So you have seven, it's eight, eight games left. Yeah. Just play him out then. You're, you're good. Uh, in that regard, you're not going to break the nine game limit. So, uh, that's, that is super exciting, is a reason to tune in. And as far as his play style goes, I mean, like, awesome. Like, we, you have the chance of, uh, seeing a, a skater who's a really good two-way forward and can play really good defense as a forward, something that this team has desperately needed for years, but also being really sound offensively. Like that's, I'm I'm really excited and and having you know him and Edvinson and and whoever else you know potentially Cider Raymond, whatever it end, ends up happening, but him and Edvinson both being on the team for the last seven, eight games of the year is super cool. Absolutely. I mean, it's, we talked about it yesterday and you can listen to our podcast yesterday. If you want to hear our thoughts on Marco Casper, potentially at the time coming over to North America, we talked about it pretty at length and we had the discussion. Could we see Marco Casper at the NHL level? And we both thought it was possible considering how many, again, how few games they had left. And the fact that he was the only one of the three players that we're moving to North America slash professional uh, that we're on an entry level contract that was capable of having a slide. And now it doesn't matter because there's less than nine games left anyway. So he can't even play the max if he was going to, but I didn't actually think it would happen. I thought he would compete for a roster spot next season. And, you know, he still is going to have to, this is basically just a tryout to see where he's at in his development. But the fact that you're going to have, Moritz Sider, Lucas Raymond, Jonathan Berggren, uh, Simon Edvinson, and Marco Casper, and you could even throw like Joe Valeno in there if you really wanted to. Sure. All on the roster at the same time. I mean, it's I I I talked after the Ottawa losses about how upset I was over the fact that we kept he, we always hear next year. You know, it's it's all about the future. It's all about the future. When like. We keep talking about the future, but we never talk about the present. And when will the future become the present? Well, that's, that's today. Yeah. Starting as of it's as of today, it's, it's the future is officially the present. You have all of Iserman's first round picks are in the NHL. 
All of Eiserman's first round picks are officially in the NHL. Yeah, that's wild, ain't it? That's crazy. And then to to put the feather in the cap of it all, the Red Wings with this win over the Carolina Hurricanes have reached 75 points on the year. That doesn't sound like a lot, and it's really not. I mean, if there's still games left, then they're going to hopefully, hopefully it's almost a point a game that. as a team. It's not like a crazy number, but but do you know the last time the Red Wings finished with 75 or more points? Oh, geez. Uh, 18. Close. You were, you were off by a year. 2016, 2017, the first mm-hmm. year the Red Wings missed the playoffs, they had 79 points to finish the season. So it has been, if you want to go from 2017, because that's the year yeah, the, the season, season yeah. finished. Six years? Six years. It's a long time. And if they can eclipse 79 and get to 80, that'll be their best year since the last time they made the playoffs. Now, they're not getting to 93 points. That was the, their point total of the year they made the playoffs last. Right, yeah, of course. But, I mean, it just speaks to the growth. And there have been tons of frustrating moments, Scotty, right? Like, I, I talked about it earlier. Again, I, I call back to when I was like, when will the future be the present? I'm tired of, like, looking ahead. I'm tired of trading off assets. I want the future to be now. But, like, when you look at the grand scope of things and you take that step back and you look at the bigger picture, it's one of those moments where you go, progress has been made. Wallman's here. He's great. Cider has been electric. Raymond having a bit of a sophomore slump year, but still looks very promising. And then you got guys like Dylan Larkin, who has turned into pr- probably he's, I think he's hit just about his ceiling. This is about as high as Dylan Larkin is meant to hit, hit. And it's been great. And I love it. And now you have Edinson on the team, you know, despite having a not so great game, but he was playing a really, a, a really great team. He's shown incredible flashes. And now Marco Casper is going to be wearing the winged wheel. Like this is an exciting time to be a Red Wings fan. And they're not even going to make the playoffs. Like that's, they're over five hundred again. It's it's March thirty first, Scotty. I mean, we, we I've said it a lot over the last few weeks, but like all signs point to next season. Like next year is is the year. It, it always has been, and it it is like next season is you're going to have the youth all in the mix. You're going to have a ton of cap in this free agency, and you're going to have another draft under your belt. This, with a ton of picks, <laughs> this is the, the, the year. Like this, this fall, that, this will be the season where like, all right, like enough time has passed. We, we've been patient. We got enough, enough money in, in new players. We got enough external talent coming in. We have enough youth coming through the system that's worked its way to the top. Now we've extended like the captain's going to be a wing for life. Like next year is, is the year. And the end of this year is giving us like, like a teaser. It's like a trailer for a movie. It's like, here's, here's like a nice little eight game sample. Here's a nice little two minute clip of a movie. And this fall is when the movie comes out and hopefully it's good. It's this is the trailer. Yep. It's the reveal trailer. I don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Like that. Seriously. Like that's that. That's what this is. This is the sneak preview for next year. And and a lot needs to be addressed this off season. And we'll oh, talk yeah. about it at length. I'm sure uh, over the off season, but like, there's a ton that still needs to be addressed. I'm not saying that they're just going to roll this product out there next fall and expect a, a different result, but they have the assets. They have a ton of picks whether they use them or flip them or trade, they, they have a ton of potential for trades and they have a ton of cap space yet again, like next year, the, the, next year is the year where like the, the expectation, I think the bar should be to, to be a playoff team. Even if you are the 16 seed, I don't care. So let's pivot now from talking about next year to talking about tonight and Sunday where the Red Wings play the Winnipeg Jets in Winnipeg. Even Derek Lalone said in the post-game press conference that this is a ridiculous doubleheader for the Detroit Red Wings, going from home ice to Winnipeg on the road. Winnipeg's a good team. They're sneaky good. They're fourth place in the Central Division, uh, competing for a wild-card spot. And 
they're probably going to get it. I, I would imagine they're, they're, they're one of the better teams out there, but they have been struggling a lot lately as well. So you don't want to also, I don't want to put myself out there too much as I guarantee it. Cause that'd be bad. Uh, but yeah, the jets are, they're a good team and you can't second half of a back to back. It's going to be tough. You're probably going to see Helberg in net hoping for his sake. He has a, uh, a, a good, a good game. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, another team that is, you know, you, you want to talk about, like, if the Hurricanes and the Islanders had a baby and then you, like, water down the style of play just, like, a little bit, it would be the Winnipeg Jets. Like, this is a, a good defensive team. That doesn't allow a ton of shots, but they also have some pretty solid goaltending. And they have, like, I, I don't want to be, like, too dramatic, but they, like, don't have a very good offense. Like, they really don't. <laughs> Yet, they've, they have over 40 wins already with still, you know, eight, nine games left. They're going to make the playoffs probably. And uh, they kind of do the boa constrictor, you know, suffocate you with defense type of style as well. And so it'll just be another – test of can the wings take advantage of the few opportunities they do get yeah i mean their offense is slightly better than the detroit red wings if you want to look at point totals kyle connor's a point per game 75 and 75 john morrissey's got 69 and 73 uh shifley's got 61 and 75 luke de 58 and 67 it goes down from there so where they, they excel they don't have um mark shifley has 38 goals so i mean he's about as close as to to their like genuine finisher as it gets. Yeah, and, he, for sure. and I don't mean to discount him. He is very good. He's probably, he's probably going to finish the year at 40 goals, which yeah, is so I, I didn't goals. mean to discount the top end talent they have either. It's just, they, they get production from four dudes. Yeah. And really where they shine is in net. Connor Hellebuck is having a, a hell of a year. And if, it, if it weren't such Crazy. a strong year for starting goalies in general, you got Swayman, uh, not Swayman, Ulmark, I mean, Ulmark, Sorokin, and Soros oh, as your so three contenders. Many goalies this year, yeah. Connor Halbuck's got a save percentage of 917. He's been absolutely killer in that for the Winnipeg Jets, which is why I believe they'll probably clinch that second wild card spot. It's where they sit right now. But I mean, it's going to be rough for the Detroit Red Wings. Second half of back to back again, going on the road. But then they face the Toronto Maple Leafs on Sunday in Toronto. But Toronto, second in the Atlantic Division, is coming off of a back to back against the Senators on Saturday. So you'll catch them hopefully a little sleepy, but they are a much better hockey team. They've already clinched a playoff spot, in fact. Yeah, they're not bad. <laughs> and it's also, you know, not the postseason yet. So, yeah, the fact that they're probably going to have to play the Lightning again in the first round just kills me. It's hilarious. Call it hilarious. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. I mean, it kills me <laughs> in like a laughter kind of way. It's funny. Uh, 95 points in 74 games for Mitch Marner, Nylander, 81 and 74, Mitch a little bit Marner. of a, a little bit of a down year for Matthews, where he's only got 78 points in 67 games played, uh, right. 37 goals, 41 assists. But, um, there has been reports that he's been dealing with a nagging injury all year. It's fun. It's crazy that his down year still has him well over a point per game, but yeah, he's oh, not bad knows. at his job. Uh, meanwhile, Ilya Samsonov having a pretty dang good year for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Matt Murray, a nice bounce back year as well. 913 save percentage for Sam Samsonov and 905 for Matt Murray. They're a pretty complete hockey team. There's not a lot of weaknesses on that team. I think defensively they still have room for improvement, but I mean, offensively they're still lethal. Goaltending's been a lot better. This is about a Toronto Maple Leafs team, and they've proved it. They they've they've beaten you already this season. You got we play this team three to four times a year, so. Y'all know what the Toronto Maple Leafs are. I don't got to say too much. I agree. All right, Scotty. Uh, any final thoughts? We ball. We do ball. Um, oh, this thing behind me. Uh, I got a Robbie Fabry stick that Ooh. Scotty and I will be giving away on the podcast at some point. We just have to figure out how we're going to do it. So and stay well. tuned for that. Hopefully we don't take too long on deciding, but in the meantime, you guys can check it out in my background shot here. Heck yeah. So, uh, big thanks to Matt, the authentics director at LCA for hooking me up with that Robbie Fabry stick. So that's pretty sick. One of you lucky fellas on the podcast is 
I'm going to walk away with it. So once we figure out how we're doing the giveaway, still got to figure that out. But absolutely. In the meantime, you guys can check it out in the background. It's a nice piece of decor. If I, I thought you say so. <laughs> yeah, you can totally see it so well. I can see it. Good for you, man. I can see it in person. Did you only say fellas? Well, that's like a that's a over. It's like when you say dude, it doesn't mean like oh. just men. It means yeah. anyone of, you know. Any I was just thinking. I was like, you know, who knows who's gonna win it? Someone. Someone is. You're will, right. I mean, you're not it'll keeping be, it. So. It'll be a human being. Yeah, you're not his, keeping it. His uh, Twitter handle. It. His Twitter handle is at Brian Fisher WWJ. He won. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Just totally so. random. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you aren't gonna believe this. I won. That's so sad. Thank you for I, all the likes and I, the I, subscriptions I, and the follows. Uh, I didn't even know I entered. But I actually won. So. <laughs> all right. We should wrap this up. We're already over 35. Uh, we ball. We'll be back on Monday with, I guess, two game recaps. Good Lord. It's packed the last two weeks of the season. We're already yeah, at the end of the season. Only a couple of uh, those left. Yeah. Uh, so stay tuned. Same time, same place. It's your team every day. Every day. <laughs>